Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Baba Batra, we are up to Peregim of Mishnah Zayin. Today's Mishnah should be Le'elu Nishmad, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisrael, Ovchana Ben Miriam, Sasson Ben Raya, and Yoshua Ben Shifra, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Le'abdi Ben Chaim Lechaim, and the Refua Shilema, Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betoch Shachol Yisrael, and the Chlama Mera Ben Amin, Or Tzion Chai Ben Dvora. The Mishnah discusses things a person may not do with his own property because they will cause damage to his neighbor. Lo yiftach adam chalonotav lechatzar ashutafin. A person may not open windows from his house so that they will, they will overlook a courtyard in which he is a partner as this will prevent his partner from being able to use the courtyard for private activities. Although he owns a share of the courtyard and has the right to be there, his neighbor can still use the courtyard for private things when he is not in the courtyard Opening a window that overlooks the court will prevent the neighbor from ever using it for private activities since he cannot tell when someone will be looking out the window. Also, if one buys a house in a courtyard other than his own and the back wall of that house faces his own courtyard that he shares with neighbors, he may not open a new door for the house to that back wall into the court in which he is a partner, because the people living in the newly bought house will then walk through the shared courtyard, increasing the foot traffic there. Although he already owns a share in the courtyard, the second house he bought does not, for it does not open in, onto that courtyard. The other neighbors can therefore refuse to allow the residents of the second house to walk through their courtyard, and he cannot open the door from the new house onto the courtyard without their permission. For that same reason, if he built an additional story on top of his house, he may not open a door from it directly into a shared courtyard because the people that will live in the new story will cause in- increased traffic in the courtyard. And the commentators explain that the additional story is considered a new house if it has its own door that opens directly into the courtyard, meaning if the door opened to a ladder or stairway that descends into the courtyard rather than into the house itself. Since this new construction has no share in the courtyard, the neighbors can refuse to allow such a doorway to be built as it will increase traffic in the courtyard. The Mishnah explains which type of types of additions are permitted. But if he wishes, he may build extra rooms within his house. He may build an attic room on top of his house and open them into his own house rather than directly into the shared courtyard, meaning he may subdivide his house into smaller rooms or build a low ceiling inside the house to create an attic without adding to the total square footage of the interior of the house. Since he is entitled to fill his entire house with residence if he wishes, no one can object if he divides the house into smaller rooms as long as he does not create a separate entrance. And since they all exit from his door, the neighbors cannot complain about the extra traffic. Now, even in a case where one has a chazakat that allows him to have windows and doors opening into a shared courtyard, for example, and one is replacing a window or door that already existed, there are still rules about where they may be placed. Lo yiftach adam lachatzar shutafin. One may not open in the case of a shared courtyard. Petach keneged petach. Doors that are directly opposite a neighbor's door. The chalon keneged chalon or windows that are directly opposite a neighbor's windows, because this will cause the neighbor to suffer the loss of his privacy. And the commentators explain, it is a hallmark of the Jewish people that they respect each other's privacy, and do not place windows and doors in a way that allows neighbors to see into each other's houses. Indeed, the Torah in Bamidbar, chapter 24, verse 2, tells us that when Bilam came to see the camp of the Jews in order to curse them, he saw the Jewish people dwelling according to their tribes, which the Gemara explains to mean that he saw that their tent openings were not placed opposite one another. The doors and windows therefore must be moved slightly to the side, so someone cannot see directly from one into the other. If there was already a small door or window there, he may not make it into a larger one because his neighbor can claim, I am able to guard my privacy when you have only a small door opening into the courtyard. I cannot do so if you have a large one because it is much easier to see into the courtyard from a large door. Similarly, if there was already one door or window there, he may not make it into two because this will also cause the neighbor to lose his privacy to a greater degree. The Mishnah explains that these laws do not apply with respect to a neighbor that lives across the street. 
אבל פותחו לרשות הרבים, but one may open to the public domain, פתח כנגד פתח, a door that is directly opposite the door of his neighbor, who lives across the street, וחלון כנגד חלון, or a window that is directly opposite the window of a neighbor across the street, these actions will not cause any loss of privacy, because the neighbor has no privacy from the people constantly passing by in the street, in any case, unless he closes his own door or window, therefore the restrictions that apply to opening doors or windows into a shared courtyard do not apply in this case, Similarly, if the door or window that was there was small, he may make it larger. And if there was one door or window there, he may make it into two, because this will make no difference to the neighbor across the street. And in fact, the rabbi is right, the commentator is right, he may even open completely new doors and windows where none existed before, because he is not harming anyone by doing this. The reason the Mishnah is speaking of enlarging and increasing is to contrast the law here with that of the previous set of cases. And that is then of Mishnah Zayin. Mishnah Chet, the final Mishnah of this chapter, deals with things that may not be done because they may cause damage to the public. One may not dig any type of tunnel beneath the public domain. Whether they are pits, ditches, or vaults, for we are concerned that the tunnel will weaken the street and it will collapse and cause damage. Rebi Yezer Matir, Rebi Yezer, however, permits the digging of a tunnel under the street. As long as it is strong enough so that a wagon filled with stones can travel over it safely, for then we are not concerned that the street will collapse. The Rav tells us, One may not put up poles or balconies that stick out from his house into the airspace over the public domain, because we are concerned that passerby may injure themselves upon them. However, if the poles or balconies are so high, that passerby cannot reach them even while riding camels, and they do not cast the street into shadow, building them over the street is permitted. <inaudible> Rather, if he wishes to put up poles or balconies, he must move his house farther back into his own property and then put them up so they are entirely within his own property and do not stick out over the street. The Mishnah teaches an exception to this rule. However, if one bought a house in the courtyard and it already has poles and balconies in it that appear to be sticking out over the public property, this courtyard has its chazaka, and he is not required to remove the poles and balconies, for we assume that the seller moved this house back as per the law, and the poles and balconies were built permissibly over private land. Right? This follows the rule that we advance a claim on behalf of a buyer, and since it was not the buyer himself who extended the poles or balconies, and he does not know whether the seller extended them illegally, or whether the seller had moved his house back before extending them in accordance with law, and the public later took to passing beneath the poles or beams as though the, that land were public property, even though it was in fact private, the court will claim on the buyer's behalf that it is possible that the seller acted properly and erected the poles and balconies in his own property. Therefore, the poles or balconies may be left in place, and they may even be replaced if they collapse. The court does not advance a definite claim that this is the case, therefore the buyer is not entitled to reclaim the land under the poles as his own. And that is an Abu Tayyab today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.